To understand the external features of the brain, we'll start with the central stalk, which is known as the brain stem. To look at it, we'll take the rest of the brain out of the picture. Here's the brain stem. It consists of the medulla, the pons, and the midbrain. The brain stem contains tracts that connect the cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the spinal cord. And it contains nuclei that serve basic autonomic functions. It's also the origin of nearly all the cranial nerves. The medulla is cone-shaped. It tapers down to become continuous with the spinal cord. The medulla becomes continuous with the spinal cord here at the foramen magnum. The medulla, the pons, and the midbrain are located just behind the basilar part of the occipital bone and the dorsum celli. The dorsal aspect of the medulla faces almost directly backwards. The back of the upper part of the medulla forms the floor of the fourth ventricle. On the model, this is the fourth ventricle, this is the floor. This arch of tissue is the superior medullary velum, which forms the roof of this part of the ventricle. This delicate tissue, the inferior medullary velum, forms this part of the roof. This cut surface is the attachment of the cerebellum. It's described as consisting of the superior, middle, and inferior cerebellar peduncles, which are somewhat fused together. The ventral aspect of the medulla is marked on each side by these bulges, the pyramid and the olive. Emerging from the ventral and lateral surfaces of the medulla are the filaments of the four lowest cranial nerves, the twelfth, the hypoglossal, the cranial part of the eleventh, the accessory, the tenth, the vagus, and the ninth, the glossopharyngeal. Here's the brainstem in situ, seen from behind. The tentorium has been removed to give us this view. Here's the cerebellum, divided in the midline. Here's the divided cerebellar peduncle. Here are the filaments of the hypoglossal nerve, making their exit from the cranium. Here are the accessory, vagus, and glossopharyngeal nerves, making their exit together through one opening. Above the medulla is the pons. On each side, the pons becomes continuous with the middle cerebellar peduncle. Arising from the groove between the pons and the medulla are the next three cranial nerves. They're the eighth, the vestibulocochlear, the seventh, the facial, and the sixth, just visible, the abducent. The fifth cranial nerve, the trigeminal, emerges from the upper part of the pons. Here's the middle cranial fossa, here's the petrous temporal bone, here's the pons. Here are the facial and vestibulocochlear nerves together. Here's the trigeminal nerve, here's the abducent nerve. The part of the brainstem above the pons is the midbrain. Features of its dorsal surface are the upper part of the roof of the fourth ventricle, the superior cerebellar peduncles, these bulges, the inferior and superior colliculi, and in the midline, the pineal body. The fourth cranial nerve, the trochlear, emerges from the dorsum of the midbrain. The midbrain spreads out into these two massive columns, the cerebral peduncles which connect the brainstem to the cerebrum. Here are the cerebral peduncles in the intact brain. They're largely hidden by the lower parts of the cerebral hemispheres, the temporal lobes. To see the cerebral peduncles better, we'll look at a brain in which the temporal lobe and the cerebellum have been removed. 
Here are the cerebral peduncles again. Here on the outside of the cerebral peduncle are the medial geniculate body and the lateral geniculate body, which gives rise to the optic tract. Between the cerebral peduncles, the third cranial nerve, the ocular motor, emerges. We'll return to the intact brain.